finally hit the sack. It's kind of warm in here tonight. The breeze died. Kind of, kind of sweaty. Don't really like that. Prefer to camp in the cold if I can. That said, um, I do remember the time that I went backpacking in Montana with a 30 degree quilt and just froze every night, or at least most of them. Um, yeah, that was a mistake. I woke up, thought it was supposed to be lows in the 40s. At least that's what the forecast said. And um, I woke up and my water bottles were frozen and I had every pair of clothes on that I, ha I could possibly wrap around me. And I was still pretty chilly. I mean, I was fine, but it was cold. And I had a warmer sleeping bag sitting in my truck. I just refused to bring it because I was trying to save a little bit of weight and save a little pack size. But, um, you know, it's just a good lesson. I don't think it's supposed to get down too cold tonight. Maybe like 50. The way it's feeling right now, it just feels like it's gonna it's gonna stay kind of muggy all night. So I'm gonna leave the tent door open, or at least the screen open, and um, hopefully cool off a little bit. I remember early in some of my solo trips. Definitely one of the uh, creepiest things hearing noises outside your tent. Um, I think I've just kind of gotten a little numb to it. It just doesn't, I just kind of come to the realization that more or less it's not anything that's actually going to hurt me. Um, except um, last summer when I was, or last fall when I was in Montana, again, um, you know, grizzly bear country, greater Yellowstone. And, um, I had a really large animal run by my tent and um, it definitely wasn't like a deer or a moose. It had like padded feet. You could just tell by the way it was like by the noise that it definitely sounded like some sort of large predator. I don't know if it was a grizzly or black bear or mountain lion. Could have been any of those. Um, but uh, it was about... 5 a.m. and I just woke up. I mean, I woke up and just my heart was racing immediately because I'm already a little bit on edge, knowing that I'm. It was my second night in grizzly country, so I was a little, I was a little spooked, and I was way up in some area that was, you know, I was the only one there. So I did bring a book. I bring a book on every trip I go on, or every long trip I go on. Um, but I did bring one um, for this this particular trip too, just because I've already started it and I haven't had a chance to finish it yet. I started on one of my previous trips and got pretty close to the end and didn't quite get to finish it. So it just kind of details how easy it is to get lost up here, even if you have experience and you know are prepared um, you think you know where you're going and then you realize you don't and, I don't know it's kind of a fun book to read I'm excited to hear how it turns out I can stay up any longer. It's been a long day. I've been getting up at 5 a.m. or at least 5 a.m. probably 4 a.m. every day. Um, you know, usually get out of my tent around 5 and I'm on the water by 6. And I mean, it's bright by 5 and it stays light for quite a while too. So it's a long day and you can really get a lot of traveling in, which is nice. But usually by the time it dark gets dark, I'm done. So. I'm going to hit the sack and um, looking forward to another good morning. So, good night.
some tips that I learned while backpacking is first of all let others know where you are going and what time you'll be back just in case something happens they will know where to go and look for you especially in Malta when heat starts beating strongly take plenty of water you need at least three to four liters for at least one night eh? and here there are no natural springs so you drink what you take with you also they will kill her mold as the sun so don't don't underestimate the sun because you can get even a heat stroke so a hat glasses and some some protection are a must yeah, yeah. I think that everybody has uh, his character, his fears and his motivation. So I think that everybody should take this solo camping at his own steps. I, I see this like building a house. You don't start with the roof. You start with the foundations. First, you, you need to be comfortable trekking alone. You must be comfortable with weather. So. Uh, every factor that you are considering and taking care of will be less stress uh, when camping alone. For example, if this place you already camped with your friends, it will be easier to go there because you know what you expect. Uh, it makes your mind relax more and uh, feel safer. So, uh, if you take it step by step and take your precautions, uh, camping solo can be for everybody. some breakfast going I do have a really long hike so I'm not sure if I'm gonna make breakfast I'm not too hungry so that's good and um, it's snowing and the ground is a lot harder to walk in right now Oh, the loons are there. I've been hearing them all morning. Food bag still intact. You can see it from here. So I was gonna make breakfast, but I'm really not that hungry. And 
it is snowing heavy and I just read the weather report and it's gonna get worse as the time goes on so I already know I have a pretty pretty far walk back to the car um, so I want to get a head start now so all the snow got on here in like the span of a couple minutes so much and off we go so it's snowing heavily and I kind of don't know the way back I was going to just follow my trail from yesterday, but I don't quite remember which way I came from. I know the general direction, so that's good, but I'm just gonna try and find my way and I'm gonna check back in when I found my way. I just dismounted with the fire a tiny bit because it was a uh proving to be a little bit difficult, smothered. going and as the evening starts to draw in probably only about half an hour worth of light left that's when kind of your anxiety start to set in I guess and when you're out alone obviously a number of things could happen this fire could just decide not to go and I'd be hungry I wouldn't be hungry I'd just have cold food which wouldn't be a pleasant thing luckily I've only got ration packs with me today I do have a steak for if I can cook it and I'll just fry it off in the pan and just have it nice like that just a bit of cooked meat I love it but that's that's the kind of thing you're up against when you're outside as well on your own um, there's no one else to help you so you've just got to take your time be nice and steady and it's I've had some lessons in the past where I've gone out and I've rushed things and it's just taken me 
way longer than it should have to have got a fire going even for example and it's only because I was wanted it too quick so I just kept piling things on and that's why I've learned to just let things go sometimes. In fact one of my biggest challenges when I'm out camping is just that kind of remembering to let go. Um, sometimes you can be so busy looking for a spot in your head that you miss a hundred other potential spots. Now it's good not to just rush into a spot and think oh I'll camp anywhere um, and mistakes do happen and things do change. Um, I've camped in spaces where it's been dry and then it's turned to a marsh. Um, there was no indication of that before and even though I was on the higher ground in the low ground area it wasn't high enough. So mistakes like that I've learned um, and things like fire lighting like I've said I've rushed it and it's just gone to waste. And I guess my, probably my, one of my biggest anxieties out in the woods as well, or out being out on a solo trip like this, would be being on a multiple day trip and not being able to get fire and not being able to get dry. And I think at that point you'd have to call it and say, let's be sensible about this. Because you don't want to put yourself at risk to enjoy something. It's just not worth it. And I think that's probably one of my biggest assets is I generally know when to call it. I know when things don't have a good feel about them. I know when enough's been enough. And I don't have anything to prove, not to myself and not to anyone else. And that's a big battle for most people to overcome. Um, you can kind of, I've done it before in my past, you've come over or come out into the woods not something to prove but I don't know the woods, the woods soon teaches you you know you can uh, you can have all the plans in the world and mother nature can turn in an instant and that's why I absolutely love coming outside and experimenting with different skills and techniques things that our ancestors used to rely on a lot more than we do So an important thing I always keep in mind when I'm heading out to do my hikes and camping is the amount of dry bags I use. I normally use quite a few dry bags because that way I don't really have to worry about if my bag gets wet. I don't have to keep putting the rain jacket on the on the on my rucksack and taking it off. You know, it's easier to access it without the rain jacket on there. If everything's in very individual dry bags, then they can't get wet. Now I have quite a few different dry bags because I like to separate things like I'll have a food bag so then I know where to go to for food so that's all that's going to be in that bag. I'll have a clothes bag so you know I I know exactly what's in that bag. Uh, sleeping, all, all my stuff in a sleeping dry bag you know. It's just so much easier for me to know exactly where everything is instead of rummaging through so many different things to try and find something that's probably not even in that bag so that's a really important thing I bear in mind every time every time I leave to go hiking I always bring too much food it's better to bring too much food than than not enough you know and if you get stuck somewhere for a day you can at least have enough food to tide you over it's worth carrying the extra weight 
And really, when you're hiking, all I ever think about is eating. So I'll end up eating it no matter what. Before I head out, I always let somebody know the rough area where I'm going. I just tell them the route and what day I am expected to be back. I normally tell them that I'll put an extra day on it just in case I get stuck somewhere or, or I get lost or something. If I'm lost for longer than a day, then, then they know that I'm in trouble. It's a smart thing to do, really. I'd never leave without telling somebody my plans. Too many people are getting rescued in this area. You're always hearing helicopters going around the mountains to rescue somebody. up and ready to go. Just a short walk uh, back to my car. Oh man, I had such a great time here. This little piece of tropical rainforest is so beautiful. You know, yesterday I came uh, so tired from work. It's really drained and low in energy. And the moment I came here, you know, despite the humidity, the, despite the heat, despite the mosquitoes and leeches, everything is worth it because you get all of this, you know, the sound of the river, the also refreshing water from the river, fresh air, birds chirping, these green trees, these are all priceless. And the moment I took a dip in the river, I could literally feel myself getting healed, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And I, I believe I will do this again and again, again and again, until I'm physically unable to.
much love. Bye-bye.